Okay, tubers, as promised, I'm going to start doing a series of videos that, that um, lists everything that I've used in this shed first. So I'm going to do the battery shed first. So coming in from the solar panels on the shed roof, we have got a PCM60X. It's a charge controller and it's made by MPP Solar in Taiwan. You can buy it on eBay, the link will be below. And similarly, all the links will be below. Uh, it has got a cable here, and a car's driving past, thank you. A data cable here that goes across to the computer so it can read. The incoming cables are attached to a 16 amp, yep, 16 amp DC fuse twin pole that comes from the, from the shed roof via six millimeter square positive and negative cables. On the output side, because we've only got about 15 amps coming in, but due to the MPPT, we've got uh, a maximum of 60 amps coming out. So we've got six millimeter coming, six millimeter square cable coming in, and 25 millimeter square cable coming out, attaching to the negative and positive of the batteries. Okay, the batteries themselves, I don't need to go into too much detail about them. Everyone knows the batteries are 18650 cells. Uh, all the plastic retainers, I've used single ones. I've since learnt the 5x4 off eBay, links below, are the same as this one and will actually fit into my racks that I've had custom made. Now, these racks are available for me for purchase for $99 each or somewhere close to that. They come in raw format, so they're just folded and cut. Um, if you want the plans, I will give you the plans if you throw me a dollar or five. I'll list that below as well, the link to those plans. If you do use the plans, please give me some credit because it took a long time to get sorted. Okay, so all these bolts and nuts, not much to it, there's bolts and nuts and washers on all of them. The copper in between, as we've gone through before, is two centimeters wide by one centimeters high, and that just joins everything up. The On the positive side, we have got the 0.25 millimeter um what is it called winding wire from jaker link below and on the negative side for the for the other side that is basically just 240 volt cable out of the wall and i just stripped the copper out of it so it's the cheapest cable i could possibly buy from masters down the road and just strip the copper out of it and i only needed one meter and one meter's done all this pack so far as a side note the positive side it's about $5 for a roll of that winding wire from JCAR, and I haven't used the entire roll on all of these ones that I've done. And bearing in mind, I've done three cells and I've redone one pack completely. So this, you only need one spool of wire. Okay, read my notes. Next is a BMV 700, which is the shunt which is technically in that one, but the actual shunt itself is here. That's a 500 volt shunt with the positive lead. Uh, no, yeah, not negative lead from the battery. Sorry, I haven't got red and black on these, so I've got to look at them. The negative lead goes to the inverter side of that shunt. So that way when it's charging, it goes back into the batteries and then the BVM can get the accurate state of charge. That's the only reason I got that device. It's not the most accurate device in the world, but it was only $220. Link below, got it from eBay. Um, this little wire here runs up and it's a positive cable. And that's the cable I had a little bit of problems with, with the little fuse going in there. And I've got some spare fuses down there. They're, they're very small. The fuses themselves are 100 millivolt. 250 uh 100, 100 milliamp 250 volt fast blow fuses so it's paid for me to have a few of those on hand so what else have we got the battery cables themselves the battery cables are 32 millimeter square welding cable from from a local welding shop down down the road and i think i paid about six or seven dollars a meter for that very very cheap and then the ends the ends i got off of ebay they were about 40 or 50 bucks for a hundred of them good value because if you've got enough you can you can remake everything and change stuff around like i did and you're not going to run out of ends i have crimped 
all of these joints and I've got nothing bare anymore. It's all, it's all heat shrinked up. I've crimped all the joints with uh, two layers of crimping. So crimped it here and crimped it there and then put the heat shrink over top to make it as safe as possible. And that's what the electrician wanted to actually, yeah, to agree that it was all done right, obviously. Battery cables themselves, um, not much to it, negative to positive. I've mixed all the cables around a little bit so they're not balanced on each side. They're not symmetrical on each side and they certainly aren't the same length on each side. But I have tried to do that as much as possible. So the negative lead comes back over here and joins up to the PCM60X via this 200 amp breaker. So the break, so it comes negative comes out of here through the breaker down to the in. Now this side here is the inverter side. This side here is the battery side. So I want to actually feed the power in here for the charge. So it goes through this and then I get the amps coming in and out of the batteries. So that's why it's attached to that side there. This here is a HR17160 um, fuse, link below. And it's basically, you can just pull it down and it's a circuit breaker slash uh, big blade fuses inside of there. Uh, the case itself was $80 off eBay and the fuses were about $15 or $20 each and there's two in there with one spare. So apart from that, we've just got the saddles, the clamps, the screws and whatever else. Well, YouTube, that's that one for now. I hope I've covered enough detail. Should cover those sorts of things and fire extinguishers and everything else, but any questions ask them below like rate and subscribe you know the deal and if i can help you out with anything else i'd love to cheers